Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about touching other people's crystals and why I don't mind other people touching my crystals. Do you touch other people's crystals or do other people touch your crystals? How do you feel about it? You know, in the beginning I never realized how sensitive the issue of touching other people's crystals was until I went to a gem and mineral show and I touched another woman's crystal. You know, at the gem and mineral show, I really should have been focused on all those crystal gemmies calling me, but this woman was wearing this magnificent looking piece of crystal jewelry. It just looked like some kind of ancient artifact. I was standing next to her and I turned around and I saw it and the next thing I knew my hands were on that piece of jewelry and guess what she was just like oh my god do not touch my crystals do not touch my crystals and I was so you know <laughs> um, apologetic and I really really did profusely apologize to her for touching her crystals and after she explained to me that that was really sacred to her, I understood her point and she's the one who introduced me to the crystals, tektite and moldavite. So in a way, touching her crystals really opened up a conversation with her and she introduced me to off-planet um, crystals like tektite and moldavite. So it was really good, but what really shocked me was the, how the reaction was of do not touch my crystals, don't touch my crystals. And I was like, okay, okay. So this really made me curious um, about why people are sensitive to other people touching their crystals when really crystals, in my opinion, are really loving gems and you know they they will always find the people that they are meant to find you know that was the greatest lesson that i learned from touching that woman's crystals how crystals really do have legs it's always said that crystals find us right crystals will always find the people they are meant to find so sometimes we think that oh my gosh we are the owners of these crystals we bought the crystals and therefore the crystals should you know, really belong to us, not understanding the grander plan, the bigger plan of love, and the crystals really do need us humans to really walk them to the people that need to experience their healing powers, their subtle energies, and their loving power, because we never know how the crystal that someone else touches will help them in their evolution, their healing process, and their process of awakening. So. It might seem to be a narrow plan, but the plan of love, the plan of light is so much grander than we can expect. So the lesson that I learned from this whole experience from the beginning that really made me more open to sharing my crystals with others is that we are the legs of these crystals. We are the carriers of the crystal energy when we have them in our beings and we are walking around with these crystals and other people are out there and they need to engage with that energy. They maybe was, were not able to afford that crystal, but because you are the carrier of light, because I was the carrier of light, because we are the carriers of light, we walk around spreading healing and spreading love in this manner. So in many ways, it's not so much that we want to be healers, we want to send love into the world, you know by using some very direct methods like healing sometimes the methods that we spread love and send love around are very very subtle and that is sometimes just by wearing them on our bodies and of course allowing other people who are attracted to those crystals to touch those crystals so that they can either get awakened or something can get triggered or activated within them to allow them to carry on in their evolution process this is how we spread love. This is who we are. We are carriers of energy. We are the carriers of love. We are the carriers of light. And we never know who we are going to be affecting every day. So sometimes when we can't really do something physically, just by being carriers of that light and consciously allowing the people engaging with us, this is just an awesome way of spreading love. So I allow people to touch my crystals because I know that I am the legs of the crystal and I'm always happy to share. It's all about give, give, give and share, share, share. It's no longer so much about me, 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 but about the wider 
perspective, the global agenda, the sharing and the loving and the unity consciousness. And you know, again, when I'm thinking about it, I don't mind people touching my crystals because we truly are one. The other person could be the leg, the other person could be the arm, the other person could be the head, you know, who knows? So when we're touching the crystals and we're all getting activated through this energetic form, we truly are just unifying ourselves and all remembering as a soul group. So the crystal can really be the point of contact for really a larger purpose. And then another thing that makes me really want to share my crystals with other people is because I think about people like Jesus in the Bible or some of these biblical figures or some of these people who really carry a huge energetic presence with them. Some people just are, have a big energy around them. When you get around them, you can feel that energy. And when you get into their presence, you can change and you can shift. Same thing like Jesus, for example, in the Bible. There's a story about a woman who had an issue of blood and he, she went and touched, she had been sick for so long, but she touched the hem of Jesus's garment and immediately the power left Jesus and came to her and she became well. And that story always reminds me of how sometimes when you touch a crystal, the energy that comes from the crystal, you know, it sometimes comes into your subtle energetic bodies and causes all these transformations and you can feel and experience a lot of positive changes in your life. So just as Jesus was an example, or some of these people carry huge energies that when you come into their presence, when you touch them, your life can change. Why not allow yourself to really represent that and be that energetic person, the energetic being who carries this energy, who has these tools of transformation that people can touch so that their lives can be changed? So this is one of the ways that I I view life when I'm walking around with my crystals or, or when I allow people to come into my space and interact with the crystals. I don't mind anybody coming into my space, coming into my home, touching my crystals, because who knows, you know, what people are feeling on any given day and what makes that one person, you know, be drawn to those specific crystals. I mean, it's very rare for people to be drawn to crystals. So if I find one person who is drawn to a crystal, I'm like, oh, go right ahead. Of course, you know, there's always sacred, um, some sacred pieces that you can set aside and keep them away from people. Like I don't allow people to touch my crystal grids because I create these grids for a specific purpose and I don't want people touching them until you know their use or their function is over and done with. Then you have, anyone is free to play around with the crystals. Other than that, I have noticed that when people come to my space, you know, they look around, I'll allow them to touch and interact with um, any of these crystals. All the crystals that I have in my space are obviously for my highest good and the highest good of all beings, you know, and for every situation. So they're free to send their energies out to everybody because this is how I like it and this is how they like it and that's good for me. And I've always noticed that, you know, funny enough, when people come to my house, this one crystal is what everyone likes to touch. They look around at all crystals, but usually they'll never touch any other crystal other than this crystal. So this crystal is called Sunny. This is a warm and inviting crystal that anyone who is even afraid of crystals will always touch Sunny. She has such a sunny energy, very warm, very inviting, and very, very non-threatening, very loving. So everyone comes and touches Sunny. So she's the one who kind of introduces everyone to feel calm and relaxed about crystals. So maybe you have one of those crystals in your house or in your space. So I don't mind people touching my crystals for that matter. And then again, when you think about it, it's when everything is about love. So when you're carrying that loving energy, you're th expecting or people who come to you to be vibrating on the level of love. So for me, it's not about fear. I don't feel afraid that someone is going to, you know, uh, you know, touch my crystal and sort of put in some kind of energy that I don't like. Because at the end of the day, the crystal can take care of itself and I can, I can sage it and I can cleanse it. And in the meantime, it has touched the other person and, you know, helped the other person out. And if I feel some kind of way about it, all I can do is sage it and put it under the moonlight and cleanse it and it will be all happy again. So it really is a way of sharing. It's all about giving. And I'm always in such gratitude that, that at least some people have talked about the crystal and touched the crystal and have come to the knowledge of the crystal. And who knows, maybe they've been activated and healed. And this is going to help them in their journey of evolution and growth and expansion and awakening. So I truly, 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 truly love crystals. 
I love to share the crystal energies. I don't mind anyone touching my crystals unless it's my crystal grid. I don't mind sharing my crystals with anyone. So everyone is welcome. So how about you guys? How do you feel about people touching your crystals? Do you touch other people's crystals? I'd like to hear your stories. Let me know. Thank you. Let's share the crystal energy and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.